I've been involved in a number of database migration projects in my career, and they're never something that I've either looked forward to doing or enjoyed while I've been doing it, but they are a part of life. And if you've looked at migrating your database workloads from anything to CockroachDB, you'll probably have come across a tool called Molt, M-O-L-T, Migrate Off Legacy Technology. Molt is a tool that lives within the database migration lifecycle. The main database migration topics are schema migration, which is something that's handled by Molt, data migration, handled by tools like Stream, S-T-R-I-I-M, Click Replicate, Q-L-I-K, and AWS, DMS, Database Migration Service. The final part is verification or reconciliation. Once you've got your data in the database, is it correct? Do you need to keep on updating it as changes come in during the migration window? I'll be focusing on the last part, the verification part. I won't be creating any kind of tools that keep the data in sync. I'll just be looking at the data between the two databases, the one that I've migrated from and CockroachDB, and asking, can I trust the state of CockroachDB post-migration? First, I'll create a Postgres database and connect to it. Next, I'll create a table and some indexes. There'll be an ID column, which will look very familiar to you if you're coming from a CockroachDB background. It's a UUID primary key whose default value is the output of a call to gen random UUID, a random v4 UUID. Next is a date that's non-nullable and a nullable string that represents an event that happened on that date. I'll insert some data into the timeline table. I'll hop over to the Cockroach Cloud UI and I'll add a schema. My dialect is Postgres. As I don't have any int fours in my Postgres table, I'm gonna ignore this and leave it as is for now. And I'll update the schema file that I used to create my Postgres table. That's the same statement that I pasted into the console. I'll click convert. And we can see that once it's done, there are no errors and there's one suggestion. This is a very trivial migration example. The suggestion is that there's an index on a timestamp. We can acknowledge that we're happy with that. Although based on the best practices, you can follow the URLs in these suggestions. It might not be best to do that, but I'm not demonstrating that. I'm just demonstrating the process of verification. I'll acknowledge that. Now I can migrate the schema. I'll migrate it into a database called migrated from Postgres and I'll set the owner to be myself. With that done, I'll hop over to the databases and you'll see that we've got our new database migrated from Postgres into which there'll be two tables. One is the timeline table that we created. You can see that CockroachDB has moved the indexes into the create statement and we have the migration internal statements table. This allowed CockroachDB at the schema conversion stage to show me the statements that it would run in order to convert the schema. Now I'll hop into a cockroach terminal and make sure that the user I'll be running malt verify as has access to the tables it will need. And with that done, we're ready to run verify. I'll paste in the command and essentially it's malt verify. You can configure the number of table splits, the, the amount of detail that you want malt verify to go into. At the moment, I just want a very simple output, the input source and the output source. The input source is called PG Truth, and it points to our local Postgres database. And the database we're verifying is our CockroachDB serverless cloud database. Let's run verify now. So what we can see, verification is complete, but there are missing rows in the target database. The culprit being CRDB compare, which is the database that we're verifying against. And it's not happy. The data can't be found. So the malt verify tool isn't convinced that the migration has happened successfully. If we hop back into the cockroach terminal, I'll insert the missing data and we'll run it again. I'll insert the data, exit the terminal, and run malt verify again. This time, verification is complete again, but it's found five rows and succeeded in verifying those five rows. The IDs matched, the ID type matched, everything's fine. It is complaining that there is one extraneous table, and that's a warning, that's not an error. And all that's saying is there's a table in the destination database that didn't exist in the source database, and that's the migration table that we looked at earlier that allowed CockroachDB to list the statements that it was going to run. So I look at this and think, my verification is complete. My CockroachDB database is in a good state. Let's do the same for MySQL. First, I'll launch MySQL, and I'll hop into a terminal. I'll make sure that we're using the right database. I'll just use the default MySQL database for now, and I'll copy in the schema. So that's creating a table called timeline whose ID is an auto incrementing ID this time, an integer type and the same indexes that we created on the Postgres table. Now I'll insert some data and we'll do the migration process in the same way that we did for Postgres now. I'll come over to migrations. I'll add a schema this time. The dialect will be MySQL. I don't care about the case sensitivity. 
the auto increments I'm going to change to UUIDs based off CockroachDB's recommendation of primary key types. We don't recommend using sequential auto incrementing IDs based on the way that we distribute the data. And that results in what we call hot ranges of data, where the data is all clumped together in one range of data and it becomes a bottleneck for your system. So I'll use UUIDs and I'll leave enum preferences as they are. I'll load my MySQL file that contains the values that I copied into the terminal just now and I'll convert. As before, we don't have any errors, but we do have a suggestion. It's the same suggestion we, we saw last time. I'll acknowledge that and I'll migrate the schema. I'll call this database migrated from MySQL and the database I'll leave as me. With that finished, I'll hop back into the databases, but this time I'll click into migrated from MySQL and we'll see that we have two tables. One is the timeline with the new UUID type instead of the auto incrementing ID column and the migration table. I'll hop into a cockroach terminal. I'll use the database that we just created and I'll grant the user that we'll use in the MOLT tool access to the tables we'll need. Now I'll run MOLT verify again, but this time targeting MySQL. So there's a quite a lot of differences now and that's because MySQL comes packing with a lot of tables that are now missing from our cockroach DB setup. They're all warnings, they're not necessarily errors, but it's something to be aware of. But more interestingly, now it's saying there's a mismatching table definition. It's noticed that the original auto incrementing ID that MySQL used is now different to the UUID that CockroachDB uses. I can insert data into the CockroachDB table, but that's not going to make any difference because the data types are different. This isn't something I'll fix in this demo, but it is something to consider. To summarize, the Molt Verify tool is all about giving you, the user, confidence in your database schema migrations. I've been in positions where I've created a CockroachDB equivalent of a MySQL database, and I wasn't sure if I'd run into any issues. With Molt Verify, it makes it very clear if the shape of your data, the tables, the schema, etc., or the data itself is going to cause you problems post-migration. And in the case of our MySQL auto-incrementing table, we've got a number of options. We could create composite types within CockroachDB that, that use the auto-incrementing ID, but compose the primary key of multiple types. You can achieve distribution and performance through that and it will allow you to maintain referential integrity from that data to any tables that rely on that data, that auto-incrementing ID. Molt is available now. It's available for Postgres, MySQL, SQL Server, and Oracle databases. Give it a go and share your thoughts with us.